Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Rustic Waters with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we did the Take Them With You quest, uh, which is basically a rat upgrade for the warrior. So we used that on a rat, and then we actually combined it with the uh, swimming upgrade or the uh, water breathing upgrade. That got us a, you know, a swimming rat <laughs> that could kind of come out there with us and help protect us while we, you know, go and fight mobs and stuff like that. We used them for that. We did some exploring. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this episode, though, you can see we are getting very, very close uh, to being done in in this first uh, tab, the introduction key. So we've got five quests left. Uh, three of them, you know, I've been kind of saving to do together. And then we've got a the grinding out one, which is the grinder to make, you know, the grind stuff down. We haven't needed it yet, so I haven't done it. But I kind of want to complete it before we move on to the next uh, tab. And then we got sort of our final closing out. Uh, you know, this is just a click quest. So to start, though, we're going to do the Mo Money, Mo Problems quest. And that is to craft ourselves a wallet. Uh, to be successful, you will need to engage in buying and trading in an in-depth economy facilitated by underwater villagers. You will receive guild currency from quests, mob drops, and most importantly, by selling goods to villagers. The wallet only holds skill, but will keep your inventory organized. While your funds are limited at the start, there are means to generate much more gill later on. Sea merchants can seem expensive until then. So basically, it's just a way to keep all of our gill in one place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our craft table. And to make a wallet, it is two woven cotton, a chest, and then any black dye. Now, this is the most common black dye I've got in my world right now, uh, but you could use ink sacks or you can use, you know, regular black dye. I think there's even an organic black dye for later game uh, that you can craft. But right now, this is the best one we've got. And there we go. There is our wallet. We'll take a step back. There's our quest. Open that up. Our reward is one five gill. It's not 15 gill. It is one five gill note. We'll hit claim on that. And if we go, we can open up our wallet. We'll go shift click up there. We've now got $5 in it. Now I've actually got some additional money from the sieves down below. Uh, we've been collecting these uh, $1 coins. Uh, very, very, you know, very handy, very useful. I'm actually just going to take these as is and we're going to go throw them up into our little wallet there. The next two quests are kind of hand in hand. That's the two something for nothing quests. And, uh, you know, on each tab, there's going to be something similar to this, where uh, basically on each page, you will find quests with a fancy border. These are your test your might quests. These optional tasks will give you the opportunity to turn in items and resources in exchange for guild currency. Guild can be used to purchase some convenient items on the guild exchange tab or purchase goods from deep sea villagers. So to do this first one here, we need to collect three fabric mesh. It will consume it. So that means it, 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 you don't get to keep those items. You're basically selling the game, these items, and you'll get two $5 gills. So basically 10, 10 gill. I was going to say $10 there. You'll get 10 gill. These are not repeatable ones. That's something to keep in mind. It's not a way for you to get infinite um, gill, but it is, you know, a way to get at least a little bit earlier on. So to make the fabric mesh, we've done this one before. It is four woven cotton and five string in a tailor's workshop. We'll take all three of those. We'll go back to the quest book because it's a consumable one. It's saying, Hey, do you really want to do this? Detect submit down at the bottom. It's now complete. There you go. We can now claim our, our gill rewards. We'll go back out. There we go. Quest complete something for nothing. We now have, we open up our wallet, an extra two five gill uh, bills, and we've now got a hundred uh, gill in our wallet, which is doing pretty good. One more of these though on this page, that is the uh, goo pack heat, uh, something for nothing. Uh, again, it's the exact same uh, tool tip, so I won't you know go over it again, but in this case, we need to do 16 of them. It does seem a little bit high, but the, um, the goo packs aren't very, very difficult to make. Basically, we need uh, magma shards and woven cotton. I've actually got two from uh, about two episodes ago when we crafted them originally. Uh, we need to make 14 more to get up to that 16. So to, to get those magma shards, we need blocks of charcoal and then a little bit of fire in our world. We'll throw that. I might actually have made it there. I think that's uh, not quite. There we go. And then we just watch. I think that's it. There you go. There's our magma shards. Throw that into our workbench. 
Magma Shard, Woven Cotton, Goo Pack, 16 of those. We're going to open that up. The text submit again, 16 complete. Reward, claim that back. And we're going to open up our wallet, throw our bills in there. And we now got 110 gil, which is really, really cool. But what we want to do now is we want to kind of purchase something. And this is more of a demo. I don't really need to do that. But one of the places that talked about spending that, which is the Gill Trades tab down there at the bottom, uh, you see we've previously uh, spent a little bit of Gill. We got the auto users for our uh, little rat, automatic rat um, sifting station, I guess I want to call it uh, sluicing station. Oh, wow. Look at that guy. <laughs> he was loud. He's also kind of stuck between my buildings there. Anyways, so we'll go back into our quest book and back down to the guild trades. And for this uh, example, what we want to do is I'm going to buy one of these, uh, <laughs> it's so loud, these survivalist strainer denses. Uh, that's because I need one in my world. This is a good opportunity to do it. I'm going to hit that detect submit. Nothing happens. That is because for one, I don't have that 20 gill bill. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go open up my wallet. We're going to go take out four out of those $5 gills and we're going to go and put it into a workbench four or five. So that should get us a 20. This doesn't work this is what I was talking about earlier, about maybe having a range of different currencies in the wallet if you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull two of those fives out. We now get a 10 gill bill and we can add two fives to that 10. That gets us a 20. You know, so we now have the correct currency. We're going to go open up that wallet. We're going to put that in there. We're going to go hit the quest again. Detect submit. Still doesn't detect it. So money in your wallet does not get picked up. You've got to actually take it out. I guess it's similar to buying in a real life. You've got to take the money out of your wallet. The store just doesn't automatically do it for you. But we'll open that up. Detect submit. There you go. Complete. We now have that survivalist strainer dense in our inventory that's absolutely perfect so i'm going to go move that out of my inventory there the last real quest on this uh page is going to be uh the grinding it out uh the grindstone will assist you in making alloy blends it requires a crank in the top and must be turned manually but it'll suffice until you get powered automation so to make a grindstone it is the seven stone a artisan flint handsaw and a trip wire hook so to make the uh, artisan flint handsaw, we need three sticks, two flint. That gets us our saw. And then we're going to go take that, throw it into a uh, workbench again with seven stone, the artisan flint handsaw, and the tripwire hook. That gets us the grindstone. We'll come back up. There's the quest complete. Claim the wooden crank. We need a wooden crank uh, to make this work. So we're going to place it. Let's place it over here for lack of a better spot. We'll take the wood crank, shift, click on the top. It's now right there. And then we can, you know, grind a number of different things uh, in here. I'm going to go grab, let's do, we'll grab one iron, we'll grab one copper, and we'll grab one gold. Just because they're handy, just because they're right there. One, two, and three. You see, we got three different slots for three different types of items. We can stack multiple ones in here as well. Let's grab a, another iron. We'll put that up there. So we now have two, one, and one. We're going to go start right clicking on the handle. As long as it is moving, that means it's grinding. It's If it's not moving, that means there's either nothing left in there or, you know, everything is done uh, or you haven't actually put something in there that is grindable. So we're just going to keep on going. And you see it's now stopped. I am continuously and I've broke it. So that's what I want to show up. As soon as it stops moving, you got to stop clicking. And that's one of the reasons you can't use the auto clicker with it. The second it doesn't have something to grind, basically that handle breaks. It, it, it gives you a couple of tests, you know, or a couple of tries before it actually does it. I think that's mainly a way of keeping you from automating this early on. Um, as, and as, as much as I dislike that, I like my automation. It's a limit the uh, pack makers have decided to put on it. So you just got to kind of work around it. Keep in mind though, if you need to make a, another hand crank, uh, it is simply five treated wood sticks in a workbench gets you another wooden crank. And we can come back over here, shift, click it, and it's back on top. So keep in mind, you can't automate this 
yet. Uh, there will be ones in the future that we can automate, uh, just not right now. Uh, also, we can, you know, basically use these uh, pulverized items now to make alloys and things like that. And actually, if we go grindstone... And we look at all the different recipes, like there's 26 pages of things we can grind here. Unfortunately, we cannot grind the stuff that comes out of the sluice. Uh, best we can do is grind uh, up, you know, actual ores and stuff like that, as well as the ingots that we've already made. We can grind them down into pulverized items. So uh, that is it for the grindstone. We've got one more quest, and this is more of a uh, click it, it is done quest, but... Moving forward, from this point forward, you can, your journey can branch into many directions. It can be a bit overwhelming to decide what to work on next, but that's the fun of it, yes. Further tabs will open up as you complete others. Uh, consider working towards getting diving gear so you can explore around your hub, then consider getting your auto sluice and steel production. Once you can make steel, you can make your submarine, which opens a world of options. Power cells for the submarine craft are as fully char- Power cells for the submarine craft is fully charged, so generating power isn't immediately required. Once you have a submarine, you can explore for the nether and end temples to visit other dimensions or stop by an ocean village to trade with merchants. So this is another just click detect. We're going to click that. It is now detected. Hit that detect. And we are done. We have finished off the very, very first page. Uh, next episode, we're going to start on the parts and production. Uh, this is how we start getting into some more fancier uh, type machines. And there you go. Quest complete moving forward. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please think about leaving a like and a subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Jackal Wolf. Also, check out the description below. There will be a link to my Discord page. I would love it if you guys stop by to say hi. As well, check out the link to my Twitch page. I've been streaming uh, Minecraft and modded Minecraft Tuesday nights, Friday nights, Saturday nights on Twitch. JackalWolf77. If you want to hang out, chat with me, uh, stop by there. Uh, you know, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time is usually when I start. And there is also my Patreon page. If you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content you want to support, stop by, check it out. There are a lot of great perks out there for all of my supporters. Uh, I just broke a torch there. Uh, one of which is the Patreon-only Minecraft server. If you feel like, you know, if you want to hang out with me on a server, uh, that is a great opportunity to do that. I usually am on my server about, you know, Monday nights, you know, in the evening, uh, hanging and chatting and, you know, playing some Minecraft together. So that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.